I think that we have to get over this fantasy of neutrality in institutions and schools. You either impose a Christian value or, or that vacuum is going to be filled by something else, by somebody else's values. And right now, those are the values of the teachers unions. Those are radical, progressive, secular communists. They have a crazy curriculum. They are not interested in educating our children. Mind you, our, our kids are the laughing stock of the world because our schools are falling apart. They don't teach anybody anything. Instead, they want to sexualize your kids. They want to politicize your kids. They want to turn your kids into activists. Let's talk about religion in schools. So we see in Louisiana, you now have to display the Ten Commandments. Republicans think that's what's going to get schools back on track. You have poor educational outcomes in schools across the country. But meanwhile, you've had Republicans across the country gutting funding to public schools. They see poor educational outcomes and the people they want to blame are the teachers. Somebody has to plant the flag sometime and start to take back what we have handed over to these crazies. How is it the teacher's fault? These are the same teachers that are overworked and underpaid. Teaching is a thankless job, and you have many teachers who are buying school supplies out of pocket. Bringing religion into the classroom is not going to make things miraculously better. It's just going to be confusing, and it's really unfair for people who aren't Christians. But this really isn't about education. It's not about teachers. It's not about unions. This is about Republicans' effort to transform this country into a Christian country. It already is majority Christian, but they want to make it official. They want an official religion. They want a theocracy, despite their pro-clutching about Muslim-majority countries around the world. It's okay when they do it, because their religion is the chosen religion. And their leader is someone they've turned into a god. They've turned Trump into a religious figure, despite very clear, open evidence that he is one of the most immoral people to be involved in politics in recent history. You know, Norway has a great education system. In New York, they said, yes, we're studying the Norwegian plan. Oh, really? You're studying the Norwegian plan? Well, you better bring a lot of cops along because you're having a lot of problems, right? We're studying the plan of uh, Norway and uh, Denmark. And actually, China is very high on the list. I mean, China is number three or four on the list. Think of it. Can you imagine that China is number three or four on the list? No, no, we're going to give it back to the states, and most of those states are going to do a phenomenal job. And the problem is not that teachers unions are communist. They're not doing any of this stuff that the right wing alleges. They want to teach because it's their passion. Some people are drawn to it, just like people are drawn to medicine or volunteering or literally anything else. If that's what somebody wants to do with their life, let them. We should thank them for it. And we certainly shouldn't gut the education system. If Trump really wants to improve the education system, like he says he does, and he wants to make it more like Norway, which he says he does, does, maybe he should get a better understanding of how that is funded. The radical Christian right in this country are becoming increasingly more violent. Take a look. But let's pretend that this gentleman over here was running for county recorder. And he's a good Christian man that believes what we believe. But we can work with that, right? We can, that's, that's unity. That's saying, hey, we're going to shake hands and we're going to agree that we're going to run a good Christian foundation campaign and we're going to treat each other well and we're going to get through this together, right? That's unity. But if Stephen Richard walked in this room, I would lynch him. I don't unify with people who don't believe in the principles we believe in and the American cause that founded this country. She wants somebody to be lynched. I don't remember that verse in the Bible where Jesus called for lynching your enemies. Maybe I missed it. But the intermingling of religion and violence has terrible consequences. And is the same sort of outcome that you see, especially the right, argue that we need to go to war with the country over. It really is throwing stones in a glass house. There's much to be made about Trump's relationship with religion. He pretends to be Christian because you have to if you want to run as a Republican. But it is so funny to see him actually try to talk about it. Take a look. Have you ever asked God for forgiveness? That's a tough question. I, I don't think in terms of, I have, I'm, I'm a religious person. Shockingly, because people are so shocked when they find this out. Uh, I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian. And I go to church and I love God and I love my church. And Norman Vincent Peale, the great Norman Vincent Peale was my pastor. But have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> 
I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. It was a pretty simple question, but he couldn't answer. He rambled on about the sermons that he heard in church. These are sermons that he probably was not paying attention to. He was only going for show and took nothing away from. But it is so funny to even imagine him asking for forgiveness. I'm not going to try to do an impression. There are many people who can do better Trump impressions than me, but I will let you imagine that because it is very funny. Of course, he's never done that. We've all seen his narcissism. Do you think he's asking somebody he doesn't even believe in for forgiveness? Of, of course not. But the same people who try to argue that Trump is a man of faith and somebody we should look up to are also the same people who are willingly turning a blind eye to things that are purely amoral. Look at the outrage from Elise Stefanik here. They quote you on a radio station calling him insulting to women. Is that a misquote? Did you not say that? I said the statement uh, that the Democrats leaked out in 2016, that that was insulting. However, Shannon, I stood by and supported him, and I strongly support him. And he has done so much to promote women in senior positions, as well as promote women's economic opportunity uh, that we experienced under the four years of his administration. So I've been proud to support him. Uh, it's a disgrace that you would take a New York Times article and just read negative quotes when the reality okay. was. She's offended that the anchor would even dare to read the article. She's in interviewing her about. It's a crazy proposition, I know. But I think if you're a politician and you say something in support of your party's leader, it's fair game to later ask you about that and why. But they can't handle it because once you start to scratch that surface a little bit, the entire game unravels. Everything about this facade of religion crumbles. So of course, you wouldn't want any questioning about your party and you certainly wouldn't want any scrutiny on your party's leader for his behavior. But the more radical they get with their rhetoric, the more dangerous it becomes. Abortion should be considered a crime. It should be considered uh, murder. You're unjustly taking the life of a human being, and so that's murder. And what I've said is what is the historic position of the Christian church, that if you take the life of a human being unjustly, then what the state owes you, if it's proven and it's true, is capital punishment. You forfeit your right to live. Here is an Arizona Republican who's very close with Trump, mind you, arguing that women who get an abortion should be killed. It wasn't enough just to overturn Roe. They want more. Of course, they're going to go for IVF next. They're already going after the abortion pills. But once they start running out of medical procedures to target, they're going to need to look somewhere else. And the only thing left will be people who can give birth. So this isn't somebody going out on the fringe. This is somebody just seeing where this road goes. He knows. That's the inevitable conclusion of all of this. They have built the campaign for an anti-choice movement on a religious foundation. So it has a guise of being just and moral and right. And the more you continue to inject religion into that conversation, the more violent it becomes. Because in their minds, they're not doing something for political reasons. They're doing it to serve a higher power. And the brainwashing within that results in things like this. Of course, this completely distorts the Christian message. There are plenty of Christians who have no problem with other people exercising bodily autonomy. There are people who will look out for their neighbor. There are people who do support welcoming immigrants who are also Christian. Those are the people we should lift up. Good for them. If they want to practice religion and they're not harming anybody, it's totally their right. Here's a perfect example of that. Here's somebody who called into C-SPAN. He admits he's a conservative, but he refuses to vote for Trump because he can clearly see the religion that he's adopted and the faith that he practices doesn't mesh with Trump's behavior. And the divisiveness that I've seen uh, from my party um, in the past 40 years has got me uh, kind of puzzled. I just registered as a Republican two months ago uh, for the fifth time, Mr. Biggs. And uh, I'm just going to leave you with this comment, and that is that uh, I register as a Republican uh, because I'm a conservative, and I'm going to vote for Joe Biden because I'm a Christian. Thank you for listening. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who would argue that Biden's behavior doesn't match Christianity as well. The reality is most politicians don't, but the Republican Party is one of double standards. They want everyone else to live under religious rule. They want you to live your life in accordance with the faith that they pretend that they have. They want to make decisions about you and your body. They want to tell you what you can do, what you learn, what you hear, what you say, and ultimately what you believe. But the guy that they continue to nominate, the person they continue to support, has shown all of us that he stands for none of that. He's able to do whatever he wants. He can break any commandment. He can violate any deadly sin. But at the end of the day, he's the guy who can deliver a couple of buzzwords and a political speech pretending to be Christian, and that's all they need to keep selling this project. And their end goal is keeping you under their thumb.